Tanya Hoffman's fabulous. Tanya Hoffman's fabulous. Tanya Hoffman's fabulous, fabulous TV show. Welcome, everyone. I am so glad that you're here today with us. Oh, my gosh. I have one of my favorite, not only just fabulous people I know, but one of my very best friends, Miss Minette Ryden. Yay! <laughs> and we're going to hear from her in a minute because you're going to be wowed, as always, right? You know I bring on the most amazing people, and Minette is even beyond that. So you're going to love her. So one of the things to really look at, is what are you doing, right? We have talked about taking action, being proactive. Stop just sitting there and waiting for things to happen for you. I want you to change your life, and I want you to go out and change somebody else's life because when I started doing that, my life changed. When I started focusing on how I could help others, it was amazing what happened in my life. And a lot of times people are so focused on their issues, their problems, their successes, their, that they don't stop and look at what's even going on around them. And then they go through life and they're all by themselves. And I don't want that to happen to you. I know how amazing it is to connect with people mm -hmm. and not just to connect like, hi, Manette, it's nice to know you, you know. <laughs> But really get to know them, right? <laughs> There's so many times people are like, hi, Tanya, you don't want to just talk for a minute? I'm like, for a minute? What? What are we going to possibly say in a minute? You know, <laughs> We've got to get to know each other, and then we've got to figure out what else. How can we actually help each other? You know, And you've got to stop and think about that for yourself. How can you help people? I mean, really help them. Not just fluffy, oh, I want to help you, but really, hmm, this is what I can do for you, where you're solution-based. So I want you to pick up the phone and call somebody today. I want you to get on the email, and I want you to email somebody and say, I want to talk to you, and I want to figure out how we could collaborate. I want you to go on social media, and don't just post something I want you to connect to people on social media hi Susie I love what you talk about here on Facebook love to have a chat with you you know what people actually say yes you know as long as you don't come across <laughs> you know, kind of creepy or something <laughs> guys don't tell a woman there she's beautiful on Facebook okay it goes nowhere <laughs> So, you know, you really have to really want to go out there and do something and make something happen. And that is why I have Minette here today, because she is so fabulous, and you're going to love her. So, Minette, hi! <laughs> hi, I'm so excited to be back on your show again. Thanks for having me back. I know, it's so much fun. So, I know, A, you've got a new book. And I'm so excited for you to have everybody see it. Yay! It's so pretty. The designer did such a beautiful job. <laughs> it would have only been be more beautiful if your face was on the front. Oh, it's on the back. Oh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> we got to make you humongous. Um, so tell us a little bit, Manette, about you and what you've got going on. How have you changed your world? Wow. It's changed so much since you first met me. And I think back to how long ago that was. I know we always try to touch base on that. So when Tanya and I met, I was publishing a parenting magazine. And, you know, I loved what you said, Tanya, about getting into business to be of service and being able to help other people change their worlds. But what I've realized is that there's two parts to being successful in business. Yes, it's great to be of service. It's also great to make money doing it. And I have found so many people that can't seem to figure out how, including me, how to make both those parts go together. So I started this parenting magazine because I needed the information. I knew other families in my communities need the information. And I pretty quickly built this big six-figure business. We were making hundreds of thousands of dollars every year. But because I'm so super creative. I didn't have a plan. I wasn't paying attention to the details. And my husband had a great job. I wasn't paying myself. 
or I was paying myself just a little bit. And so here I was making all this tons of money and none of it was really flowing to me. And it's pretty still, you know, gives me that little twinge of shame to say that out loud in public that, you know, what's it feel like to be making all this money and it's not coming home? And why is that? And what was I doing wrong? And at the end of the day, we really made some significant shifts uh, that I ended up converting that magazine to an online magazine that's still going. I'm super proud of that, that NorthTexasKids.com. I'll give a plug to the magazine. If you live in the North Texas area, it's still there and chock full of great information, for, especially for parents of preschoolers, toddlers, and elementary school kids. And Liz is doing a phenom phenomenal job of keeping that going and growing. But you know what? I realized that my kids were getting older, I was tired, I was working too hard, and I could see the business model ahead of me when I started to sit down and actually can make a plan for what it would take to grow that business and what it would mean for my family to grow that business. We made a hard decision, which was to let go of it. And we actually were really done living in Dallas. We knew we needed to move closer to family. My husband really wanted beach. So as Tanya knows, a couple of years ago, it's been two and a half already. The time is just flying by. I know we re relocated to the American Riviera. We live in beautiful Santa Barbara, California. And I was just talking to two ladies before I got on the interview with you this morning that are just totally snowed in again in New England and I said I'm not gonna gloat but you know Brad and I went for a run this morning it was probably 45 we're at the beach the Sun is shining it's just absolutely glorious <laughs> here today I'm a little boring Tanya sometimes I really miss those Texas thunderstorms I don't miss the tornadoes <laughs> you know? um, but sometimes it's you know clouds are really actually pretty cool so you know but it was this dramatic internal shift that needed to happen on so many different levels. And when I moved, I spent a long time scrambling and I knew I wanted to be a coach. I knew I wanted to help other women business owners. And I really knew I wanted to help them not make some of the stupid mistakes that I'd made and really be able to also use the skills and talents that I had learned in growing this big company to grow my next one. And what I learned really quickly was different plan, different business model, different marketing. There is no such thing as a business in a box. I hate to tell people, you know, they think that they can just follow somebody's method for growing and building their business and it doesn't work for everybody. And, you know, you said something really interesting about this idea of really connecting deeply with people that is so important and so powerful. And it's taking the best from what people have to offer, but understanding how to adapt it into a system and a model that works for you. We're not all the same. So the big change for me, um, I would say the other big change that was really dramatic for me was understanding I needed help and that I couldn't do it all by myself. I had lots of friends. I had lots of collaborators. You know, um, I bought lots of home study programs. What do, what do they call it? Shelf help, right? I invested a lot in shelf help, and I still wasn't seeing the traction in my new business that I wanted. And one of the biggest ahas, Brad and I were walking on the beach one morning, Tanya, and he looks at me and he says, I don't know what to tell people it is that you do. And I'm like, oh. I thought I was being really clear I <laughs> answers. I thought I was being articulate and really sharing, you know, what it was. And I was trying yeah. to come from my heart. And the truth was I didn't have clarity. And actually the new book, The Artful Marketer, is kind of that, it's a story of my personal journey through Scissor Tail Publishing and the success and the big mistakes that I made, as well as how we got to where we are now, which is sitting, living in a beautiful house in a beautiful city. We both work from home and my business is thriving. And there's a few things I learned along the way to, to make that happen. Isn't it interesting too? I mean, I meet so many people and they tell me what they do and it's like one ear out the other. I have yeah. no idea. And yeah. to them, they're like crystal clear. They understand what they do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, and a lot of it is people put a lot of words into things yep. that don't need those or they try to romanticize it or make it what they think is marketing isn't. They try to fluff it up to yes. make it sound like it's more than really what it is. And right. you're like, oh, you're just a realtor, you know, and they yeah. come up with these great words 
and then it makes it even more difficult to understand what they do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, and I think that's kind of where I was. I was in that way too many words, and it took me, honestly, a year. So I want to tell people it takes time, right? You know, you and I have known each other for quite a while, you know, even with Public Speakers Association, right? I've watched you go through many iterations, right, under that umbrella of really narrowing in. And I think entrepreneurs get really scared to really narrow their focus. And if I could offer one tip or suggestion, is the more that you narrow your focus, the easier it is to reach out and connect with those people and have those deep, meaningful conversations. Because it's really then, quick and easy to say, here's how I help people and here's what I'm passionate about. Does that resonate with you? And how do you help people? And does that resonate with me? And where can we support each other in building together? You know, I, in fact, I was telling somebody about you the other day, you were the first person I ever heard the word coopetition from. <laughs> you know, and she's somebody that does some similar things to, that I do and some different. And we're perfect partners for collaboration and coopetition where we can, you know, work on projects together. So the clearer you are, the easier it is to have those really heartfelt connections with people. Yeah, you know, and you see people as they grow, you know, mm -hmm. and a lot of times people are like, oh, they're not doing anything anymore, and they just kind of discount them instead of just saying they're just in transition, you know, mm -hmm. and you and I have been through lots of transition. <laughs> Way too many. And my, my husband wrote a chapter in the book and, you know, he's really talks about that. Oh God, here we go again, changing directions again. And, you know, part of it is being that creative entrepreneur. Part of it is just in marketing success. You have to try, test, try. But I also know there's a part of me that gets bored quickly and it's like, oh, I'm going to go try this. Oh, let's go try that. Woo! You know, and really needing to, to, to focus. And what I found was when I got absolute clarity about who I serve and how I serve them and how much business I want to do, it made everything so much simpler. It made it just, it made me more attractive to people. It created the opportunity for me to be a greater service to my perfect clients because my program is a match for creative entrepreneurs. It's not a match for accountants and financial planners and people that are very uh, linear, cognitive, you know, structured thinkers. They're not my ideal clients. So yeah. once I was clear about that perfect match, it made everything so much easier. Exactly. And you know what I realized too, I mean, the transition that we all go through to be supportive of someone and sometimes that means giving them their space. Yeah. You know, um, but also, and I think this is something that both of I, both you and I have learned is you sometimes have to reach out and say, now, Manette, what do you think? You know, do you yes. like, this, you know, way or, you know, yeah. you have to ask people for yes. help. You, you know, do. Sometimes it's just opinions. Yes. And opinions are fabulous, but you got to be open to it. <laughs> you do. Yeah. You know, it's funny in the coaching industry, we say that people have to be coachable. Right. I mean, I have sat down with people who, you know, over lunch or who are interested in picking my brain and, and want information, but they're not coachable. They have a, a negative response to everything I suggest. Right. Yeah. So, you know, well, what, what if, right? What if you tried this? Or, oh, no, I couldn't do that. Oh, no, that wouldn't work for me. So, you know, as coaches, we learn pretty quickly. Those aren't our clients either. They have to be willing and committed and coachable to, in order to be successful. Otherwise, it's a waste of their investment in their business if they're not really willing to make the changes. So, you know, I'll put that out there as well. You, you do, you have to be open to, to input. And that, it's interesting to me about that people that are in transition and what happens, Tanya, I think me included that sometimes when we're in transition, we hide a little bit. Um, we don't want to put it out there. I worked with a, a woman on Saturday. We did an all-day uh, VIP day where we realized she really needed a completely new positioning in her business. That was her clarity. And at the end of the day, she's like, wow, this is scary. You know, how is the community going to respond when I say, oh, here I grow again? You know, so don't be afraid to tell people that you're in transition and to let people know. So don't disappear. Right. If we're talking today about business success, be authentic, be vulnerable and tell people when, hey, I'm thinking about changing gears. What do you think?
right? So, because if we don't ask for input, we're creating in a vacuum, and we can't create in a vacuum successfully because then we're creating from our perspective and not from the perspective of what our clients really want and need from us. Well, and especially in the speaking world, you know, you have to ask people what they think, you know, because as title may sound like awesome to you, yeah. but it may be offensive to somebody else. Yeah. I've had people that I'm like, is that your title? And they're like, mm. yeah, oh, don't you love it? And I'm like, no. <laughs> and they never even thought about the angle that I was seeing it from my eyes. We all mm -hmm. have our little rose colored glasses on mm -hmm. that sees our world through our own eyes. So you yeah. have to get those different opinions. You know? And that's the beauty of connecting with people on social media is you've got a great forum to get all kinds of feedback, good and bad. Yeah, and, and take the bad, you know, to hard, you know, yeah. just, oh, you know, a lot of people just push those people away like they're idiots mm -hmm. or something. And yeah. they're like, no, they're your target market, too. <laughs> or if they're not, you know, and I would say when you post things like that on Facebook and ask for feedback, don't ever take it personally. Yeah. Right? <laughs> well, you know? Don't take anything in business personally. Yes, you know? <laughs> that's true. I mean, yeah. that's, I think, the hardest thing for people to learn. I know it was incredibly hard. And even still, you know, sometimes people will say something like, gosh, you know, this is someone who said that they were all in my corner and that they all loved me. And then they just said that, you know, or did that or whatever, right? And Yeah, they could be having a bad day. You right? know, it's and almost it's never about you. World. Exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. stop thinking that everything's about you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So tell us some tips. I know you've got some great tips on marketing and ideas. What What is your tips today? You know, I would say that my, um, there's three tips that I would share that are my biggest tips for success when it comes to marketing. First, you have to know where you're going. You absolutely have to have a plan in place. And trust me, as a creative entrepreneur who is constantly like, oh, squirrel, you know, <laughs> I am easily distracted. And what, happened in my, <laughs> and what happened in my publishing company with that is that we were constantly doing this but we weren't really going forwards at all. We were just um, kind of staying still and almost turning in circles or moving a lot slower than we wanted because I didn't have a clear vision of where I wanted to go, how much money I wanted to make. When I started the company, I just thought it would be fun, right? <laughs> and, and a nice way to make a little extra money. I didn't have an end in mind. So I've come into this new business much more strategically and very clear about exactly what it is that I want to create. And it's made all the difference to have that kind of a plan. And I tend to work with really highly creative entrepreneurs and they can be in any industry. So, you know, coaches, speakers, authors, consultants, healers, their biggest challenge is lack of clarity about what they really want to create for their life and their business. And if you don't have that clarity, then it's difficult to make a plan. And I always use the analogy, Tanya, you know, it's like if I were trying to come visit you in Austin and I want to drive from Santa Barbara to Austin and I just got in my car and I started driving, I wouldn't know whether to go north or south or, or, or east. I can't go west because the ocean's there. That makes, you know, okay, well, I know I can't drive into the ocean. So, but I, you need a roadmap, right? And along that roadmap, obviously, there's going to be detours, opportunities to course correct and speed bumps as well and really cool sites like driving from um, Texas to here. There's the Grand Canyon, you know, there's the great sand dunes and Carl's bag caverns and depending on the direction you go one of my most favorite places saguaro national monument in tucson there's all these cool things to see but that one's really far i'd have to drive way south and then make that turn east to get to you is it worth it to make that kind of a detour to get to my destination so having a simple roadmap allows you to stay on course and not constantly be distracted by new ideas offers programs and it helps you stay focused as well as committed and it yeah. makes it easy to make decisions you know before we started the recording we were talking about how difficult it seems for some people to be able to make decisions and honestly the biggest gift that you and I can give people in in the coaching work that we do is just helping them to make a decision yes because if, go ahead until you make a decision you can't take action yes <laughs> and you know you've got to be open to change we've talked a little bit about it right yeah. you know also when you're getting into that roadmap mm -hmm. a lot of times you're taking a rental car 
You're yes. not taking your own car. So yes. you've got to get into a brand new car and figure out where everything is. Where <laughs> is that shifter? Where is it's the, the light? It's raining. Where right? are the windshield wipers? I can't find the windshield wipers. <laughs> right? But who complains about changing yeah. when you get into a rental car? Right? Nobody. You just adapt. So yeah. you've got to do that with your own business. Yes. You know, you've got to yeah. go, okay, where's my windshield wipers now? Mm -hmm. And and do it and yeah. go that direction, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, we could also talk about when you get lost, stopping and asking for help is another great analogy <laughs> to share there as well. We could run the roadmap uh, analogy probably into the ground, but we can write know, a book about it, taking a road trip. <laughs> there we go. Well, I don't know. We'd have to actually go take a road trip. That would be Ooh, fun. Oh, yay. <laughs> we could write a whole story. Yeah, we could do a multi city tour. See, this is what happens when you get creative entrepreneurs together, right? The ideas flow, the brainstorming <laughs> happens, and it's super exciting and super fun. But the truth is, we know where we're going, and we have an idea of how to get there. We certainly don't know every step, right? But we know a lot of the steps. So having a plan in place is super, super important. I would say knowing your big why would be really important. And I'm always surprised how many people don't know what, what do they value? Why did they get into business in the first place? And it's pretty easy to sit down and say, I want a six-figure business or I want a seven-figure business. But really, do you need seven figures? Are you really, you know, for some people, oh yeah, I really want <laughs> seven figures. But for a lot of people, it's like, wow, you know, just $50,000 a year consistently would be awesome for our family. So really being clear about what's the motivating factor behind why you started your business. For some people, it simply is to have some flexibility and freedom. Being an entrepreneur does not guarantee freedom. In fact, I find most people end up working harder because they aren't really sure what they're supposed to be doing. So knowing your big why. And then number three, you know, we could talk about this one for the next six months and people still wouldn't listen and commit. Know your who, know your ideal client and know what problems you solve for them. And I still see so many people, Tanya, resisting this idea of picking a niche and getting really clear about narrowing their focus to one particular type of client. And the more you narrow your focus, the more business flows to you. It's this funky sort of counterintuitive process that makes you super attractive and super magnetic because I'm speaking to you, directly to you, instead of, you know, our favorite joke, right, about the hairdresser that, that comes into the networking room and says, anybody with hair is a good client for me. You have this gorgeous curly hair. It takes the right person to cut your hair. I'm sure you've had lots of experiences where people don't get it even because they don't take the curls into account, right? <laughs> Hairdressers are brilliant with um, color, right? Others, not so much. Some work with ethnic hair really beautifully. Some work with straight fine hair beautifully. Even hairdressers have a niche and a perfect client. I want a hairdresser who I'm going to connect with personally and who's going to give me a great haircut. I want to go in and have a fun chatty session and get a great haircut, right? So I look for that in a hairdresser. I'm not looking for just any old hairdresser. <laughs> so understanding, you know, it's a simple example, but understanding your who is probably one of the biggest secrets to business success that I find that in particular new entrepreneurs make is yeah. just refusing to narrow their focus because of they're, they're, do, they're doing it from that place of fear, Tanya, oh, and yeah. the fear that if I narrow my focus, I'm not going to get any clients. And so instead they try to appeal to everybody and they attract nobody. Exactly. And if you don't like the people that keeps coming to you, that means you're focusing on the wrong people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you know, that was um, a great lesson to learn when I started my coaching practice as I did start attracting different types of clients in, you know, I work with a, a core temperament personality that you've heard me talk about a few times. And I started really paying attention to the results of their temperament and the values. And I'm like, they're all the same. They're all exactly the same. They're all ringmasters. What's going on here? And so it allowed me to realize that I was um, communicating to the right people and it made it much simpler than to say no to the wrong people that weren't my type because I can't serve everybody. Exactly. And guess what? There's enough people in the world for every single one of us to get rich doing what we love. Absolutely. I love that. And I know that you've got your new book come that just yes. came out. Yeah. How can they get a hold of that? Because I know I personally want a copy. 
super easy amazon.com it's called the artful marketer I'll, I'll show the cover and by the way that is my original artwork there on the cover my zen tangle that i love to create the art from artful marketer the fundamental business guide for creative entrepreneurs it is written for those people who struggle with bright shiny um, object syndrome you can get it in print or the kindle version as well and the kindle version is only like three bucks so it's a no-brainer and it teaches you specifically what marketing mistakes to avoid mm -hmm. and how to simplify the process of creating a marketing plan and a marketing calendar so that it becomes fun colorful creative and easy to implement because as creative entrepreneurs we're easily distracted and so we need a simple way of focusing our marketing activities that work for us until we're at a point that we can just say oh i need somebody else to do that for me so yeah. which is an exciting place to be at i'm a big fan of outsourcing i know you are as well yes and all of you that are listening that aren't you know just an idea type person go find an idea type person to hang around so that you can benefit from there oh i got an idea for you <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah you know it's funny i was talking to um a guy that has an awesome podcast series named Adam Homie. I was talking to him last week. And, you know, when I was describing to him my definition of what a creative entrepreneur is, he's like, oh, you mean like 99.9% .9 of all entrepreneurs? I mean, most of us got into business because we have tons of ideas and we wanted a way to put our ideas out into the world. And while I don't think the percentage is that high, I do think as entrepreneurs, there is a there are a large percent of, of people who struggle with systems and structure and processes because it's not fun and yeah. it's not why we got into business in the first place you know it's not fun to sit there and make a spreadsheet to, for your follow-up system but, <laughs> but if you don't you're not going to be successful so um, the whole book is the culmination of the work with my coaching clients over the last couple of years and it's all about making marketing colorful creative and fun and effective yeah. Nice. And I know you're giving something away today. What is that? Um, so I have an awesome free giveaway on my website called the 10 must have tools that every entrepreneur needs to thrive. And I mentioned a couple of them uh, to you today. I talk a lot in my work about that ideal client. That's, you know, one of the, the tips and nine other awesome tips to really get you going in your business and to help you stay focused and on track. And they can find that at minuteriordan.com. And I'll spell that because I know it's a little tricky. M I N E T T E R I O R D as in dog, A N dot com forward slash tools, T O O L S, Riordan dot com forward slash tools. Nice. So, everyone, make sure you take advantage of that. Oh my gosh, you know, every time someone gives away something, just grab it. It's free. Yeah. What would be harmful <laughs> to do that? I mean, I'm always like, people are like, oh, I don't know. I'm like, what is there to know? <laughs> well, you know, in all honesty, this is one of the marketing strategies that I use is to give something away. People will be put on my email list. But you know what? If you get on my email list and you don't see that the information continues to be useful and engaging, say bye-bye it won't hurt my feelings when you unsubscribe from my email list you know i think people also think they're going to get caught into something but i send out a, a weekly email newsletter with other great marketing tips tools and articles you know and a lot of fun stories and I, i'm always doing free webinars i have one you know coming up on how to create a marketing plan so you know it's um it's useful information and I have a lot of integrity. Tanya tends to attract people to her and around her that are really authentic and have a high level of integrity because she does too. So, you know, go check it out, minuteryordan.com forward slash tools. And like I said, you can always unsubscribe. Nice. Well, I have enjoyed you being on today. Thank you for being on it, on the show. I'm always happy to be here. I'm always just happy to have an opportunity to see your gorgeous face. <laughs> and yours too Thank and you. everyone make sure you go and connect with Manette um, also if you haven't been to the website go to the website public speakers with an S association.com you know I am the CEO and founder of the public speakers association and love it because I want to help you get your message out there you know I think the 
I, it hurts my soul to hear people with these amazing messages that can truly change people's lives and nobody has ever heard of them. <laughs> mm -hmm. So for me, it's about getting your name out there and getting your message out there so people can take advantage and that you can get booked for opportunities to speak and everything. So go check us out. Um, you'll have fun. I've got a new game on the front page so you can take a little game and we have a speaker's assessment. So they're all free and, um, you know, just, have fun and do things right um, also we've got our conference coming up it's the public speakers conference.com is the website and when all kinds of amazing people are going to be there we're gonna have people that actually are gonna be booking people for radio magazines conferences virtual events all kinds of things that are going to be going on plus we'll just have a great time in San Antonio Texas um, June 14th through the 17th want to definitely have you there so thank y'all for coming, and I will see you next time. Bye, Manette. Bye, Bye. everybody.